of Friedman Adventures. We're coming to you from our Big Fish Bait and Tackle studios in the beautiful city of Seal Beach. And I am blessed to have my good friend, KJ. All right, How are you, my, my friend? It's oh, good to see you. I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine on this lovely Saturday morning. Everything slept really well. Ended up working late last night and, and didn't expect that. And You're in the limo business besides I'm, doing, right? Yes, sir. I'm so do you drive team. also? I drive also. That, oh. Actually, I, I am the only driver because I like I just like driving myself. I meet such cool clients. I mean, you, I can't tell you some of the coolest clients I've met. Many of them, I've been with them since they were single, when they had a girlfriend, when they got married, when they purchased their first house. They had kids. I've seen their kids grow up. As a matter of fact, last night I had to pick up a family in which their kids are like 13 or 14. Yeah. And they were like little infants and they're taller than me now. Wow, that's you amazing. Know, and, and it's it's a good thing. I like, imagine you're kind of almost like a bartender at times in terms of like somebody's got a problem or something. They probably discuss uh, stuff with you and t hash stuff out. Am I right about that? Let me tell you something. In my position and the way that I am as a person, my clients really trust and cope have a lot of, uh, they confide in me a lot. So what happens is they bring me into their family yeah. and they actually ask me to do a lot of personal stuff above and beyond just being a chauffeur. I just become like they're like, I guess you could say, not like a, like a, like a house, a person that they can count on for anything, whether it's their car to get fixed, yeah. uh, whether they have just can, any kind of issues with anything outside of you're, the show. You're somebody they can count that, on. They can count on me. And yeah. they know that I have their best interests at heart and they can trust me. And you know, that's hard to find. You know, typically the people that I service, you know, they are pretty well off. So they don't have the time to do some of the smaller stuff or the know-how, so they need to rely on somebody they can trust. So it makes my job interesting. You know, they take me places, they take me traveling with them. I don't know if you guys saw the post last week, but I was right there, ground level behind the end zone at the Rams game when they played uh, the Arizona Cardinals right there, up close and personal, saw Aaron Donald, everybody, uh, saw the interception. And so those are some of the kind of perks that I get. You know? So I mean, lots of good perks, but um, yeah, I love my job. That's that's one reason why I drive. And uh, you guys probably even seen sometimes when I was at the uh, backstage at the Academy with all the actors and entertainers walking inside. I'm in the back of my vehicle tying up tying up jigs and rigs and hooks and stuff like that and I posted on Instagram and yeah sometimes I have to do those some of those things you know like get busy all right well we're gonna trust you today to give us some great tackle tips because people out there want to know all about mag 12 swim baits and so much more and here you are at the Academy Awards with all these great people and now you certainly stepped down a few levels to just be with me, but yeah, no. what can I tell you? Well, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> humble person. I don't care how much money you got, I'm gonna treat each and every individual the same. That's the way to do it. That's how I am, and, and they know that. And you know, I'm not a starstruck person, and I've been with the who's who of the what what's, and I could drop names all day long, but I don't drop names. But I've been out there and rubbed elbows and shoulders with some of the most famous people that you guys have known, you know, but. Don't talk about it. Excellent. Keep it to myself. Mag 12 swim baits. First of all, what's the 12? What does that mean? Why why a 12? Well, to be quite honest with you, is that you know when I started fishing for rockfish, um, I just couldn't find a long enough swim bait that was like 12 inches long. And what happened when I was fishing, I started catching lean cod. And then as they started to fillet the lean cod, I noticed that they had eaten the other lean cod yeah and they were 12 inches long oh wow plus and then i said and, you, know, and you started to see that as a pattern i started to see it as a pa as a pattern i said uh -huh. well why am i fishing these small little swim baits i need something big so what happened is that i got some balsa wood and designed my own paddle tail it was 12 inches long and i was fishing with 16 ounce of that head so i was fishing a lot of more bay and and so on and so forth and i was catching some big lean cod i'm talking about like 20 25 27 pound lean cod you're fishing up there on the black pearl I was, and... well i was fishing up there on the endeavor at first oh okay i used to fish with brad, was... on, on, the, brad on the endeavor yeah okay you know and so what happened i said you know what i need to come up with my own paddle tail so i did what i did i just got on youtube started reading and uh got some balsa wood and what i did i shaped and sanded my own paddle tail my own self so and you did the R and D. I did the R and D and shaped then, it, and then I got some RTV mold, and then I made my own RTV mold out of that. Awesome. And then, then the next thing I had to do was figure out plastic. So how to get the plastic? And let me tell you, it was not easy. Uh -huh. I mean, I went through a lot of trial, error, experiments, uh, a lot of money, uh, a lot of miscues trying to figure out how this stuff works. I mean, because nobody told me. But then it started to come 
crown and I found the right plaster saw, the right consistency. And then um, I found the colors and I found glow in the dark. Awesome. And then I started making my own paddle tails and they were working. I mean, they were really working. And that was great and well and good. And then what happened is that there was another company out there, I'm not gonna mention the name, they started to copy my paddle tails and using the glow. And that kind of bothered me. Uh -huh. And I used two baits also at the same time. So I said, okay, let me figure out something else that I could use that could possibly work to catch these fish. So I was using these Gitsa tubes, those tour tubes. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm sure a lot of people know them. But the only problem with those were is that they're made out of a very soft plastic. They're very thin and they're not big. I think seven or eight inches is the biggest that they come. Yeah. And so when you try to slide them over the bed head, within one or two fish, especially caught, they're torn up. I said, I gotta come up with something better than this. Okay, so I literally got online and I said, I need to have somebody from a CNC shop that could uh, R&D me, R and make a mold for me. Yeah. So I went to a couple places and you know they weren't too interested in, in something that I had like that. And of course it was gonna cost some money also. And I was driving in Gardena down 135th Street. Yeah. And this is a it's a beautiful story to me. And I was literally driving down 135th Street, I literally Googled the nearest CNC shop to where I was at at that time. And the CNC shop that came up was called um uh, Jeffrey Bob Lewis's CNC. Yeah. And I gave him a call, I made an appointment, and I'll never forget, I walked into the office, and it was a gentleman sitting down there, and I noticed on his wall that he had all these little bass flatworms, and I told him exactly what I wanted to do. Trying to find out, to find out he's a fisherman. He said, go over Perfect, there. right? Yeah, he said, go over there and look on my, um, on my table over here, on the couch. There's a, a two boxes, open them up. There were two modes of paddle with the paddle. Oh, really? I couldn't believe it. And he's a high-end, CNC shop. What he does, he deals mostly um, in the aerospace industry. Mm -hmm. we're talking, we're not just any easy part that you can do a CNC. We're talking about parts that are in the hundreds of thousands of dollars with these metals that are super expensive. Yeah. You know, so very intricate. You know, I mean, they do top notch stuff for Raytheon and so on and so forth. So for him to do a mold is it's nothing for him. Yeah. So we talked about it. And showed him exactly what I wanted. I said, I want me a tube mold that's going to be a certain thickness, and I want it to be 12 inches long, right? So he engineered me a mold, and he made it for me, and I figured out the plastic and everything. And then we went out on a, a little private charter on uh, Anthony Lee on the Betty G. Uh, you guys, that's a good boat out of Redondo Beach. Anthony, Anthony Lee is the owner. Let me tell you something. He knows Santa Barbara. I didn't like the back of his hand. And when I fish with him, we smoke the yellowtail and the rockfish. And that Betty G is very stealth. Yeah, it's very Quiet. stealth. It's a slow boat, but it's a good, comfortable boat. Yeah. And Anthony is a great captain. So we went over there to the island. We are fishing yellowtail, catching yellowtail. That was a great thing. And then he says, okay, guys, it's time to go catch some rockfish. And the jig that I had was a 12-inch long. I'm going to show you two. It's, this is not the 12-inch version, but this is pretty similar. It was something like this, okay? The thing about it is I had the hook that came out right here. Yeah. And then I had a trailer hook that was tied onto the tied onto the shank or the uh, right there in the angle of the hook right there. Just right. because the bait was so much longer that, you know, I wanted to try to prevent a short bite. So anyway, he said, okay, we're over the spot. And what they do is that... They set up above the rock, and what I mean by that is that they drift over the rock, so you want to set up above the rock or the structure that you're going to drift on top of it. So and the way you fish these baits, and I've told people before, is that you don't want to drop straight down. You don't want to drop with the wind in your face. Don't be afraid to talk out to with these guys in the background. Oh, I'm not worried about these guys. You know, they're probably listening. I just want too. them to hear you. <laughs> so anyway, you don't want to fish with the wind in your face. You want to fish with the wind at your back and you want to cast out as far as you can over the structure that they're drifting over because what's going to happen you're going to have your bait already on top of that structure before any of the other eyes get a chance to get bit because they're waiting to drift over it where you're already on top of it so I, I, that's a great tip so i slung my bait way out there yeah and it hit the bottom and bam, i got bit i said oh my god i yelled because it was my first time ever using this bait and i started reeling up i said oh man this is a good fish off. I said, oh, I said, let me try this again. So I threw it out there again real quick. It got bit again. Boom. Reeled it in a 14-pound lean cod. Nice. I knew then in there I had something. 
Yeah. And that's pretty much where it all began. That's great. 12 inches long, Mag 12, when seven inches aren't enough, because I used to fish those seven inch uh, paddle tails, so I went to 12 inches. So, and that's how I got my logo and everything. It looks kind of sexy and stuff like that. So yeah, that's when seven inches are enough for Mag 12. Oh, that's, that's great. How it started. Got it, man. That makes perfect sense. And I like the way you took us through process of how you developed you did the research and development i mean it's important i think for people to know that you gotta put a lot of work in spend a lot of money make a lot of mistakes and it's part of that process that leads you to such right, a great right, product right. well you know i didn't have anybody to help me i didn't know who to talk to or anything oh, there's plenty of makers of the plastisol which is the material that goes into the plastic you know what it is it's a liquidy milky and what it does, it activates it 350 degrees where it becomes workable and it liquefies and so on and so forth. And you have different softnesses. So, you know, I had to play around with the softnesses. I mean, it was just crazy some of the things I'd come up with and it just wouldn't work. And like, I'm spending money, wasting money, you know, and it's, people don't understand it. They think that, you know, it's just easy to go out there and start doing some stuff like that. Right. But it's not, trust me, it's not, especially if you have no one helping you. Right. You know, and, but it took some time and I'm even getting even, even better. You know, I come up with a new line right now, with my smaller stuff and change it up a little bit. And I'm extremely happy with that, but we'll talk about that later too. Yeah, KJ, how did you get into fishing in the first place? Who, who was the person that got you into fishing? Well, you know what? I can't even tell you who got me into fishing. You know, I, I grew up in the inner city. Yeah. You know, and I've always- Where at? In, in, in Carson. Los Angeles? Carson oh, okay. Compton. Uh -huh. Carson Compton. Yep. Yeah. And I just remember when I was young, uh, Sunday nights, Doc Husto <laughs> and Wild Kingdom. Right. I mean, I was just You're always- dating yourself, I by was, the way. Oh, you know what it is, what yeah, it is. I know, know, I hear you. But people don't think I'm this age anyway. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Um, you don't look a day I, over I, 80. I, yeah, so, I know. Yeah. Well, that's good, bro. Yeah, I'm just kidding. It's okay. Look at <laughs> Everybody wants to be a comedian. <laughs> okay. I don't like Jimmy Kimmel, okay? So, Doc Husto. <laughs> anyway, so um, I was fascinated with- um, Acousto and the Wild Kingdom, and, and I would always watch it on a Sunday. I just love animals, uh, I love the outdoors, and I don't know how I got into fishing. I really don't. Um, but was, that was your window. That's what motivated you yeah. to want to get out to the great outdoors, uh, it sounds I, like. All I know is that I, I saw some photos of me like being five or six years old, and my father was a 18 wheeler truck driver all over the country. Yeah. And all I remember is that they bought me a green Shakespeare pole and a green rod, and we used to keep it in the compartment of the uh, toolbox of the truck. And we, I traveled all, all over the country with them. And we would stop at lakes, rivers, streams. And I saw photos of me and my mother. I'm, I'm holding up bullhead catfish. I'm catching those little perch and everything. And I've just been totally fascinated. I, I used to go outside in the front yard and literally use those pyramid sinkers. I would stand in my front yard and just cast across the street try to hit certain objects because that's just how I am. I, I want to make sure that I can be really good at what I do. Right, right. Uh, I remember fishing on the rocks back in the day when you collect a lot of mussels very easy and and you would uh, put use that as a bait and you would catch the opali perch and things like right, that on right. the rocks. And, um, and that, that's where it started. And I've just been a fan of fishing, you know, for my whole life. I went to Idaho, played football up there and lived on the lake. What position river, did you play? Uh, cornerback and uh, safety. Uh -huh. yeah, that's the year that we won the championship our first year. Awesome. And, and that was kinda like, you look like an athlete. Yeah, so, well, yeah. you know, I was just one of those things, kind of fell into it and got a scholarship, you know, just never really thought about getting a scholarship playing football. I just happened to be good at it, you know, yeah. so. But yeah, I just, you know, I've always been fascinated being around water and anytime I see water, I want to fish. Yeah. You know, and, and that's it. I do want to ask you this question because, uh, Years ago, I had a youth fishing program. We took over 100,000 inner city kids out for their first day of fishing. Thanks to mostly Don Ashley from Pierpoint Landing. Oh, Don, man, Don and I go way back. He, he threw boats our way and everything yeah. else. Um, Bill Blake, who was a volunteer, he's passed away. Earl McVicker's still around. Oh, yeah, Earl, Earl man, right. Earl's my mentor, man. All right, so said, Earl, yeah. Earl went on every trip, and mm -hmm. nobody's getting paid on yeah. these things. It was just right. for the love of yeah, the taking love, kids out. So my question is, because you were in the inner city, yeah. for all the kids that are in the inner city, how important is that day out on the water? Is, is it the... Is it the kind of thing that can open a new door for people? Uh, I'm gonna give you a good classic example. Yeah. Uh, my ex-girlfriend, I dated, single mom of four kids. 
and she had three girls and one boy. And when I started dating her, um, I got close to the son to try to show him how to be a man, how to do more things around the house because he was always around girls and um, it was difficult for him and so on and so forth. Right. But I was able to invite them on a victory. I'll never forget, I took all of them on the victory fishing. Yeah. Let me tell you, they had so much fun, so much fun. And then the son started going with me fishing on the Tornado overnight, catching rockfish, and I still got photos. And we took his friend, never been fishing before until they met me. And what was a really um, beautiful thing and touching to me is that now he's a grown man. He yeah. has a wife, he has like five kids now. But he told me, he says, KJ, you know what? You are the only man in, in, my, in my life that took time enough to show me things, take me fishing, give me an experience that I never ever had before. And he said, man, I thank you for that. Wow. And, and you know, I'll never forget that. And me, when you see me on boats and I see kids on boats, I gravitate towards the kids. I help the kids out as much as I can. I show them a lot of love, a lot of affection. I, I, I literally mentor them on the boat to where their own father do their own thing yeah you know because there's a lot of times fathers take their kids out there and kind of leave them alone i've, I've seen that I'm happen like, get out of here i'm fishing yeah they and, they, and they're <laughs> fishing and i've grabbed kids and i've showed them hey come here this is what you're gonna do man i'm gonna show you how to fish yeah. you know, i'm gonna show you what's going on i'm gonna hook you up with my personal setups you know so we'll tie up the lines and things like that and the next thing you know what guess what catches a lean cod catches a bigger fish than his ass so those are the things that I like to provide, you know, for kids, Right. you know, and, and, and even girls. I love to see girls get out there because, you know, to me, everybody should have the opportunity to get out there and fish and have a good time because it's a beautiful experience. It opens up your eyes, to not to what you're typically accustomed to or yeah. being around. Yeah. And then you meet other people and they, you know, the thing about it is a lot of kids only see what's around their areas, especially the right. kids. They get stuck in the inner miles. city, right? Within, and they're comfortable within that two or three mile radius. And they've never city. been to the ocean. And they've never been outside. Never been on a boat. You know, and, and being in the city like I am, I know it firsthand. Yeah. Because I know a lot of guys like that. They, they don't want to leave that, that area in which they're very secure because they know it. And they even, even told me they're scared to go outside because it's, no. Yeah, I think that's a lot of, I mean, I think that's a normal human thing, you know, like you get comfortable and it's hard to yeah. venture outside of that and certainly and that happens with kids. That's that, and, and that's never been me. I was very fortunate to be raised, you know, by the nuclear family, uh, you know, a father and a mother and they put me in a Christian school and it was mixed from the very day one. Yeah. And so I've always had that opportunity to venture out and always to explore because that's just who I am as a person. I'm comfortable in just one area in a stationary position. I always got to be out there looking, asking questions, and seeing what I can learn. Well, I think that's just great. And, you know, we got the opportunity when we were doing our youth thing to involve many of the Los Angeles Lakers and the Laker girls, and we just had so much fun. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Because even if one of those kids, one out of all the kids that went, gets a door open and becomes a marine biologist or a captain of a fishing boat or working down as a longshoreman, whatever, it's a door that opened up that was previously not there. Right, right. Yeah. It just opens up their mind to opportunities and to free their mind to just think outside the box. Absolutely. There's, there's a lot of possibilities out there that they can have access to. And I think that's one of the things that we have to show our inner city youth that, you know what, there's a lot of things out go for it and we just need to try to present it i love kids i mean if there's a trip in which you know i need to be a volunteer on hey sign me up call me up i'm down yeah you know, I, i'm down one of them most, and we're ne everybody we're getting to the tackle tips i promise you but this kj has a unique story here and i want to talk about it just a little bit more but we did a trip down to ensenada and we took I can't remember. I think it was 100. It might have been 200, but kids from an orphanage fishing. And Flynn Robinson played for the Los Angeles Lakers when Wilt was there. Right. And then, uh, was this, years or, ago. this orphanage was in Mexico? Yeah, it was in Mexico. And I'm telling you, it was the greatest freaking trip because, and I got my kids involved in it because I'm trying to pass yeah, that on yeah. to them. So they carry this horse out when I check out of here pretty soon. And so um, it was just so special. But there was, you speak a little Spanish. Yeah, I speak So Spanish. this, little girl comes up to Flynn Robinson 
and two kids, yeah. probably 12 years old. And Flynn's looking at her and he says, um, how old are you? And she says, quince, 15, right? <laughs> yeah. And he looks at her and says, why can't you say? He thinks she's saying, I can't say. And he goes, how old are you? And she goes, quince. And I, I had to just let that go yeah, on for yeah, at yeah. least five minutes. Yeah, it yeah. was freaking hilarious. And I'll tell you what, there's, Flynn has passed away. There couldn't have been a sweeter man than Flynn Robinson. We spent a lot of time together. I got a lot of Wilt Chamberlain stories. <laughs> so I felt very privileged because as a kid, Wilt was my favorite athlete. So I remember one time we were sitting down near the floor and they were playing Phoenix and Wilt came off and he took his headband off and squeezed it and all the sweat. So I, I ran down and touched the sweat, came home and told my mom, mom, I touched Wilt's sweat. And she sent me to a psychiatrist, you know, a child psychiatrist. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. <laughs> so anyway, let's move into the fishing, your great product. Um, what do you want to talk about first? Let's do a tip for everybody out there. How can they, you know, use your product to catch more? Or, or if you want to go through your products, first of all, what do you have? Well, let me see. How do we want to do this? All right. Let's just go through one of my products that I have right here. Okay. Um, I typically fish the rockfish around 200 feet to 400 feet. Okay. And, you know, I like of fact that you know bait fishing to me is easy here in the united states you have two hooks drop a little yeah the weight you drop down you get a bite to me that's it's okay i i like it but i need to have something that's just a little bit more challenging and that's why i fish uh, plastics so right here this is my new stuff right here uh, this is my eight ounce right here this is what i typically fish with all around everywhere i go um it's heavy enough to get down deep and it's nine inches long and as you can see here i have uh, two assist hooks now it's a 300 pound kevlar oh wow and then it's attached to inside of here i can't you can't see it right now but there's a there's an eyelet right in here which it's attached to right there and the reason why i came up with this is because when i did have uh, the original design like i said the hook came out right here yeah okay then I had a trailer hook that was tied on to the, the uh, curvature of the hook with a treble hook. And what was happening is that it would, uh, it would get snagged on the bottom, a treble hook would get snagged, and once you get a treble hook snagged, it's hard to come out. Yeah. And, and not only that, is that the fact that also when the lean cod would bite that curve right there and lock onto it, their teeth would slash the bait. And next thing you know, the bait's torn up. Right. Right? So I said, I need to come up with something a little different. So then I talked to the gentleman who makes my, my leg. Yeah. And I said, hey, can you come up with something where you have an eyelid coming out of the back? And they actually have it. And he says, yeah, no problem. So then what I did, I came up with the, uh, I, I called China, found the supplier that would make me uh, these assist hooks and the links that I want. And then what I did, I assembled it, put it together. And then now what happens is that they come out the back, so it alleviates the short bites oh cool that's the beautiful part about yeah. it you know and not only that is that when the fish bites the hook guess what they bite the hook and the bait's not in their mouth oh there you go so what happens this never gets torn up oh nice so that's one of the things saves that you I, some bucks it right saves you some bucks yeah you know? and then also what i did if you notice here this is a double uh, this is a, like a double dip but these are all injection molded and what i why i did that is because you have a lot of sharp objects on the bottom of the oceans. So when the lead is lead head is hitting the rocks, it's it's um cutting a hole up into the lead head right there. That and that's where you need your thickness at. Right. So what I did, I made it a little thicker, and now what happens now it doesn't uh it doesn't develop a hole in it like it did before. Great. So it lasts a little bit longer and it's a little more durable plastic. I've heard that term injected molded a million times. I don't know what it means. Okay. Maybe somebody else out there does. Okay. What does that mean exactly? Okay, Why so, is that superior? Okay. Okay. So most of the most of the uh, makers of the two baits, they dip their uh, baits. In other words, they get some rods and they get a container. Uh, depends on the depth yeah. on how long the rods are. They have to have a container that's going to be deep enough to insert a six inch or a nine inch rod. You yeah. see? And what happens is that it's just a dip and all the material drains out to the bottom okay. or to the tip of the head. So it comes out a little thicker and a little thicker the tail, which that's great. That's fine. Yeah. Um, then they, they figured out a way to, you know, do two colors. But 
what mine is is that mine is an injection mode and what I was, as I was telling you earlier gentlemen um, my friend at the uh, CNC store CNC shop he made an injection mode in which allows me to take I have two containers two pots yeah and they both have plastisol one color and another color then it's on top of a uh, base yeah okay and so what it is is that that base has valves which comes into the center into one valve got it okay and it's a special gun in which i inject into that valve which leads from the left and the right tank of different colors i have an injection gun that pulls the material out okay interesting and, and then once i have you know the um the molds together i inject it into the molds so then i have a left and a right color Got it. And that's how I'm able this to get it. Good. You can't see it this well right here, but like this is glow right here. See this whole part oh, it is. Top glows right here. Yeah. And this is the pink. I'm gonna try to show you when it's a little you can see the difference a little bit. Here we here's one right here. You can see that. Glow and orange. Yes. You know, I'll show you when it how important is the glow, KJ? Okay, well, you know what? What do you think? It's down at a depth where it probably helps, right? But what do you it doesn't hurt. Okay. I can tell you that for now. That's I what mean, that's what you're going it, with. It right? doesn't hurt and, and and I figured, you know, it gets so deep, it gets so dark down there, and right. you know, all they see is shallow, shadows, and your your colors change as, uh, as as deeper as deep as you go. So, like, it's like say for taxi, black is one of the colors that show up the most down there because it's so black, it, it's a it's a safe. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes, of course. You know, so like up in Alaska, you know, they they use they use some black. Uh, baits and, and things like that yeah but um but yeah so the glow you know i feel it just gives that little bit of an attention a little bit of an attraction a little more curiosity yeah whether it works or not i'm gonna say i don't know but i'm gonna say i know because that's all i pitch with right and i do pretty freaking well yeah you know what i mean you know so um that's pretty much the gist of the bait within itself yeah you know and and, and my concept of how i came up making that got it how do you fish that bait? Okay, now, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna fish one. Okay. We're, gonna just, we're just gonna fish one of these right here. This is my shark shoes, just made it, and this is the glow right here. Got it. Okay. I gotta tell you guys, these things are freaking awesome. I mean, I, I'm so proud that I made these in the way that they work. So anyway, um, I'm gonna give you a tackle tip. Okay, when I'm fishing six or eight ounces, you want to have a semi-styled rod. I use a 30 to 60. My favorite rod, is it okay to plug a name? Or Go no? ahead. Okay. Yeah, we want you to be honest. All right, I'm going to be straight honest with you. I've tried many rods, many rods. And uh, I remember the, the first show that I did a couple years ago, the Fred Hall show, there was this talk about this, um, you know, a composite uh, reaper. Oh, the reaper, the reaper, the reaper. And I said, yeah, 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 I have all my other rods and blah, blah, blah comes to find out the owner of the reaper has been my friend for over 25 30 years wow. actually more than 30 years and i didn't even know small world that, that he was the owner because we used to race slot cars together back in the day wow. randy penny oh yeah randy penny's my boy right so once randy found out that i was making these baits he came over to my booth he told all his guys go over there and support kj so i went down there to his, uh, his location over uh, in orange county there uh, huntington beach area and he has sold me a reaper. And the first time I ever took it out, I tied on a two ounce jig. And I, and I have a, I have a uh, Saltigo 35 HA. And I could not believe how far I was able to toss that jig. It was, it was incredible. And I have some good rods. Yeah. And that rod is one of the best rods out there. I'm gonna tell you, that is one of my go-tos along with the, uh, the Mega 90 that they have. What I like about it, it's made out of three composites, and it has a light enough tip to where you can bait fish it. Yeah. You can throw light jigs a mile, and you can also fish these eight ounces. Perfect. Okay, so what I do, when you want to just fish just a single, the stern and the bow, that's my favorite spot to fish these, because I'm casting, okay? Um, I hurt my shoulder throwing some hoop nets, and I had to re, uh, I had to uh, take another form, learn another technique on how to cast. Yeah. Because I couldn't overhead cast anymore. At least something heavy. Not only that, you don't want to overhead cast these because these load up the rods so much, you lose control and you can't keep your thumb on the spool because it's just so much pressure. Right. So what I've learned to do is underhand cast. So what I do, I get on the stern of the boat 
And what I do is put the uh, butt of the rod underneath my armpit and I sling it parallel, pretty much parallel to the boat with the wind at my back as far as I can. And yeah. I'm not scared to try to whip that thing out there as far as I can. I mean, I, I really suck it out. Yeah. Look at me like, you can cast that thing that far in your hand. But I've gotten so used to it, so accustomed. And, and you I practiced that. And I've worked practiced, at it, right? And it, and it takes less stress off your shoulder. Right. And not only that, it even works better for live bait too. And I'll get into that too. So what you do, you sling that thing out there as far as you can. And that rod loads up beautiful. I mean, it's, it's one of the best rods, if not best rods out there. So then, as your bait is sinking down, or, uh, thumb on the spool a little bit. You always want to just keep monitoring as the line is peeling off. Yes. Because sometimes you'll have a Johnny Bass or you have some uh, a group or something suspended, and they'll come up and snatch it, and all of a sudden your line will go limp, and you'll feel a little tug, and you you lock in that that uh that lever. Yeah. You know, and then you know in the strike position you pull up. But if you don't, you let it you know drift to the bottom. It's going to the bottom. Many times you uh, will get bit going down. Many just times. Mentioned. Many yeah. times. They're just, they see that thing coming down there. Yeah. They'll come up. Wham. They'll come up. But if you don't, and it hits the bottom, <clears> put it in gear and just pull up right away because a lot of times they've hit at the bottom and it's in their mouth. Yeah. So you just want to make sure. But if not, then what you do, you, you just bring your tip up a little bit, you reel down, and then reel, reel it up again a little, and, let it, and open the bail up and let it go down. Yeah. And you can just do, uh, figure out your own little technique. Can you just reel it a little bit faster? Open the, open the, uh, the uh, bell or put it back in free spool and let it sink down or you can do it fast. It, yeah. it all depends on which style that you want to use. Right. And then just work it all the way back into the boat until it becomes vertical or down. Sometimes I let it go a little further and let it scope out a little bit because I just want to try to stay down a little longer, you right. know, to stay in that zone. But then just start all over and do it again. Yeah. So that's pretty much how you fish it. Okay. You don't fish it with the wind in your face because if it gets hung up on the rocks, Pretty much might as well kiss it. Yeah, I got you. I got you. It's good business for me, bad business for <laughs> When it hits the bottom, you wind it up off the bottom, and then what do you do to you? Wind, wind it up off the bottom. Uh, what I do is, like, I let it hit the bottom, put it in gear, pop it up like that, okay. and reel it at one, two, three, four, five. Then I open it, put it back in free spool, let it sink down. Because one thing about these lead heads, these are called guppy minnow lead heads. Yeah. Okay? So the weight distribution is different in these as opposed to the a bullet head goes just straight up and down. Yeah. These, they go like this. Okay. They dart. Okay. They dart. That's what's cool. Because the, the way the weight is. So this is actually going down, moving like this. And I'm sure that movement just drives link uh, exactly. nuts, right? They, exactly. They want to. They want to strike at yeah. that. Right? Totally, yeah. totally wants to strike that. Yeah. You know. So in essence, that's how you fish one of these. This is more for deep water right here. The six inch version is the same exact size. But what you want to do, you want to calculate the, the weight that you want to use based on the current. Yeah. Um, I like to fish as light as possible um, based on the current, just because if, it's, if you're fishing lighter, it takes a little longer to get down there, but you get a little bit more movement and it stays in the zone a little bit longer as opposed to dropping down fast. Okay, so, and that's trial and error, that's right? You toss error. it out there and say, oh, that's not heavy enough. I'm going to go Exactly. To... Okay. Exactly. Very and good. It also depends on your ability to cast because some people can't cast as far as I can. So sometimes they need to have something heavier that can get down there faster. Me, I can cast out those so far. I will literally fish a four ounce, yeah. 300 feet. Yeah. I was out there fishing a 300, uh, 300 feet with uh, two and a one ounce together. You see, so it took a time, it took a little bit more time to get down there, but I was getting licked. Yeah. Because it was a smaller profile bait. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes they like the smaller profile too. AJ, uh, worth mentioning, I think, at least it's been my experience. I think you have more experience than me. Um, but. You're talking about fishing a two hook ganyan and catching fish, and then you're talking about fishing these. I see qual more quality fish coming on this kind of a lure correct. as opposed to the ganyan. Correct. Agreed? It's 100% correct because you know typically when you're fishing a ganyan, you're fishing a sardine or a piece of squid. So you're getting a little white fish and the, and the smaller reds, and you're getting the starries, but getting the big fish with these. Right. When they see this, they're jumping on it. Even the small fish, I'm gonna tell you right now, these jigs have caught fish that are smaller than the jig himself. Yeah, I know, you it's know? funny, right? You know, and, and, and to tell you the truth, um, on my last charter trip that we had at the end of the year on the Toronado, there was a little young kid oh, named, um, okay. I can't remember his name, right off the top of my head. But he won all of the prizes. He won an Avid Reel. Oh, he wow. Won, he won a custom made, you know, the composite that had, and then I made him a double, a double swim bait setup, and I was showing him how to use it, and he ended up catching three 
50 fish at one time. He caught a Johnny Bass on the smaller top one, a lean cod, and a story on the bottom. That's freaking awesome. He had a lean cod on this hook and a story on this. So here it is. These baits were swimming around and all these fish were trying to attack it. That is awesome. And so my next step is that I'm going to get a fish camp. And I'm gonna send it. Oh, down there you go. That's a great I idea. I want to see exactly what kind of action. What's, what's going, going on. on down there? Yeah, exactly. Definitely what's going on. Down That's there. awesome. All right, um, that that is a great tip and catching big lings and winning the jackpot. Yeah. And you talked about that kid who won oh, all yeah. the prizes and everything. Oh, yeah. That's awesome oh, stuff. Oh yeah, totally, huh? totally. I mean, I've had so many people on my charters pull up two fish on one of these baits. Yeah, uh, like three or four times. Yeah. You know, four so uh, and they really work really well, really well. Um, I went up to uh, San Francisco out of Emeryville by myself, didn't know anybody, and go to the bow, got there early. You know, I just stayed pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty quiet, just stayed to myself. I like to let my action speak, you know. Uh, went up there, and we went to the Fairline Islands, and the guys were like coming up to me like they couldn't believe it. I ended up catching like around seven lean cod or eight lean cod, and I was catching two at a time. Oh, and God. Like, and I thought I had a big fish. Like, oh, my God, I got a big fish. just pulling drag and things like that. And oh, my God. Oh, no, man. He has two lean cods at one time. That's you know, awesome. 12 and 14, 15 pounds and stuff like that. And it's pretty common to me for me up here to catch two, two lean cod, even down here, two fish at a time. Or anybody using your product, or though, any, I guess. Or right? anybody using it. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely. Definitely. I, I, I love it when my friends send, send me photos or they forget to send me photos. And oh, by the way, KJ, this is what I caught. Well, why didn't you tag it? Why didn't you send a photo? They're showing me these big lean cod uh, that they catch up north and down here and even white fish and white sea bass, uh, sea dead. I mean, because they catch everything. You've caught bluefin on your jigs, yeah, right? I sure, I sure did. Um, let me see, I don't have one of my all glows here, but I'm going to send you this one right here that I made specifically for the bluefin. Um, I just haven't had a chance to fish it. And this is a double setup. I'll show you in a minute how it's set up. But this is one of my ones right here. That I made for the blue fan. Okay. Glows right here. Yeah. And you guys know the buffalo, the nomad buffalo jigs, that kind of orangish reddish color. Right. And that's why I made that right Okay, here. cool. Yeah. Very cool. And what's cool about that, once again, you have the hooks right out here that have the three pound killer. So you don't have to worry about that break. Oh, cool. Perfect. Saying. Yeah. So that's really important on those big blue bags. So yeah. What's so so I, I had a nice here. four ounce uh, all glow bait and I was fishing on the uh, the tomahawk. I said last time it was a tribute. But it was a tomahawk uh, when Sal was working on the boat. He right. used to run the uh, two run the yeah. Enterprise. And it was going towards, you know, late evening, dusk. And he says, KJ, man, throw your baits out. And let's go see about doing a uh, blue fin. Let's do this. So I dropped it down. Build it up, drop it down, and I start twitching it. Start twitching it, and it go down, and it's going like this, back and forth, just like a flat. Point. Just what you want, just right? Like just point. like a flat. Point. All of a exactly. sudden, bam, bam, took off. Fought, fought, and I was like nervous, like, okay, I don't want this to be a hundred and twenty pounder. I don't want it to be hundred and thirty because you know I just want my hooks and everything to hold up. And sure enough, it held up, and it was like a ninety plus pound. Nice. Hook, you know? Got it on video, got it on everything, and like, it's just like, I know I have something. That's awesome. And I just got to get out there and fish more. I didn't fish a lot this past year. You're busy fishing. probably with your business. Uh, yeah, right? yeah, you got a limo business. A lot of things going on. I just didn't have the time to, but I, I plan on trying to get out there, hopefully get on some of those those night lights and those flat balls and use myself. And what I am going to do, I think it's going to work, is that I'm going to fish a double setup with like 250 pound mono with the big, uh, with the strong uh, 250, 300 pound uh, three-way swivel. And I'm gonna fish a smaller one and I'm gonna fish a bigger one. And they're gonna have a be at different lengths because they're gonna be going back and forth like oh, this. Oh, how cool. And I, I'm not trying to catch two bluefin, I'm just trying to catch that one. Right. And I think that'll work. Right. And two is better than one. Hey, it's trial and error, right? You, know, you gotta keep two trying. Two is better than things. one. I Absolutely. got it on one, so let's try two. Let's increase my odds. Absolutely. You know? Hey, they're gonna put some line on the reel. Let's take a little break. Got it. And we'll come back more right here from Big deal. Fish Bait and Tackle. Uh, done deal. Coming right back. That's right. We're here at Big Fish Bait and Tackle in the beautiful city of Seal Beach, California, right on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard and Pacific Coast Highway. Make sure you drop by for your tackle needs. If you need some bait, and most importantly, for some intel, you can find out where they're biting right there at Big Fish Bait and Tackle. Now, back to the show. Hey, 
right, we're back here at Big Fish Bait and Tackle. They've got line on the reel. The world is a better place because of it. And I'm back with KJ. KJ, one thing that crossed my mind, we've seen the baits. You've convinced me that they're super productive, but I don't know how to rig them. And there's a lot of people out there who don't know how to rig them. So why don't you take a little time and explain that to us, please? I wanna show you how to rig them. All right, cool. First off, let me see. I fish with a three-way swivel. And here's a three-way swivel right here. Swivel here already. And you pick up a three-way swivel like here at Big Fish, yeah, you right? You pick up a three-way swivel here like at Big Fish. Right there, three-way swivel. All right, perfect. So what you want to do, this is tied to your main line right there. Your this is going to be to your rod and reel. To your main line, to your rod and reel. Yes. Um, what I do is that I do a top shot of at least 40 pound on my main stick, on my rod, okay? Short top shot, you don't need much. And then you tie it onto, you one eyed it onto your three-way swivel. Got it. Okay, so then I'm gonna pull this down right here. I want you to see the lengths. So the lengths that I normally use is gonna be approximately 18 inches for one line. Yep. And then approximately 24 inches for the other one. Got just it. Just because I want it to be offset just a little bit. Yes. Okay. And on the other end, I have these quick clips right here. These are quick clips. Those things facilitate changing lures exactly. and everything else, right? These right here, they yeah. work extremely well. They do. They have them here. I use these right here. They have the P-Line quick clips. Right here at Big right Fish, here, you can get those. Fish. You can get Rod is going to be very happy with me after the show. Yeah, no worries. And like I said, the reason why you want to use the quick clips is because, first of all, it can puncture that plastic extremely easy, and you can change your plastics in and out without cutting your line, making your your top shots or your leaders any shorter. Yeah. Okay. So that's how it looks right there. Okay. This so far is really simple, and simple is better, right? Okay, simple is better. Okay. Simple is better. And this is how they look right here. So you have your three-way swivel. And this is how they go right there. See? Yeah, so we're fishing two of these baits at a time, which is totally legal. And man, I mean, I'm putting up a photo right now of a couple big lings that we're caught oh, yeah, totally, using totally. this method. Beautiful, unbelievable. I love it, man. Well, you know, the cool part about it is that these do not get tangled up. I was going to ask that. Swivel. Yeah. They don't get tangled up. These, the movement, I'll move back a little bit. They're going like this, just like this. Yeah. And the longer that I have it on the big, I want to have the leader longer on the bigger baits uh -huh. because I want them to spread out a little further and move back like this. And this yeah. is exactly what they're doing. If you hang your rod over the side of the boat as you're moving just a little bit yeah. and just move your rod around, you'll see how the movement is. Oh, cool. You'll see it and yeah. you'll see exactly why they like to strike it. Yes. Okay. Let me see if I can pull up something for you guys real quick to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to put this in the phone. See that right there? I can see it. All right, those are two big lean cods. Not once, but twice. The same day, and everybody was tripping out when they saw me catch them on the plastics. They couldn't believe it. That's awesome. Um, up there at uh, San Francisco, I went back there again. The fish up two weeks later, went on another boat. And they already knew who I was. They said, hey, there's that guy. There's the guy again that's going to win the that JP. It's fishing that stuff. So. so do you, like, let's say you drop down and you hang a fish. You feel like, do you soak it a little bit and oh, no. try to hang another fish? Oh, no, or no. when you're bit, you wind no, up? When you're bit, you're bit. Okay. When you're bit, you're bit. And another thing, too, like I said, you're going to cast with the, uh, with the uh, wind at your back. No, the uh, opposite way the boat is drifting. So, you so you're on the other side of the boat. Everybody else is over and there. And that's another thing, too, is that you're by yourself most of the time. Yeah. And you can work angles because if you're fishing at stern, you can cast a, you can cast straight uh, parallel with the boat, or you can cast out on an angle, or you can cast out on another angle. So you can work it a little bit better as opposed to if you're fishing on the same side of the boat with everybody getting tangles. Got it. You see? And it just allows you to work the bait a little bit better, and it's the best. It's it's the best way to fish for me for rock fish. And yeah. I've had ample success, and I, I even fish my smaller baits for calico bass. Well, not like that, but I fish the two uh, double set of calico bass, and I just fish these two baits. It just up the game. Yeah, heck yeah. Totally up the game. Yeah. That's why I think I can get a. a 
that's why I think I may be able to get not I don't want two bluefin like I said just I just feel I can definitely increase my game on catching bluefin when I try to fish two of these those leaders that you're tying up with the three-way swivel is that fluorocarbon do you think no that's... no fluorocarbon I don't feel really matters uh, what you want to do you want to use no less than 40 pound test when okay. you're fishing rockfish okay you say no less do you prefer 60 no 40 50 is all I use okay I don't you know I have Oh, at 50 where a link hot it went and swallowed the whole baby and bit me off but you know but you can use whatever you want you can use something bigger because they're not it's not like they see the line because the bait is moving yeah right so they can't see it yeah you know so you can fish something heavier if you want and you don't have to go those big big, big swivels just something that's you know um you know 60 to 80 100 pound rating yeah you know um, like these p lines yeah exactly let me see um well, like these clips right here are 44 pounds rating. So you basically need something like around 70, 75 or something like that. You're not going to need anything bigger than that. You know, the smaller, the better, the stealthier, the better. That's yeah. how I look at it. Yeah. And they have some good brands out there that have smaller uh, three-way swords that are pretty freaking strong. That's awesome. You know, so. All right. Well, I mean, that photo is awesome. I mean, the size of those lings, oh, incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And your baits, you know, continue but you, to you're do. you're catching two reds at a time, two johnnies at a time. Yeah. Um, it, it's just it's just fantastic, you know. So that's how I fish those baits. And once you get skilled enough, you know, you're not gonna you you can graduate to the double setups, like I'm, what I'm saying. And um, but you have to be good at it. You have to make sure that you're gonna fish with the wind at your back. You got to be able to cast. Uh, you need to use spectra. Do not use any monofilament at all on your as your main line. Uh, just use a little bit of top shot for mono, and that's it. Because you don't want any type of stretch. You want to be able, you should be able to feel your lead heads hit the rocks on the bottom. Yes. Yeah. You should be able to feel every single thing, you know? And so when you get bit, you're going to know you're bit. Yes. You know, you want to be able to set that hook and grind and get that uh, lean cut out of the rocks and, and, and get them up. Excellent. You know? Let's move into another tackle tip. Do you have something else in mind you want to talk yeah. to people about? You know what? Um, you know, I don't fish bait often, but. There's sometimes that, you know, I may have to fish a bait. I may have to fish a sardine or a squid or something I like that. I had to do it this morning You know, on the beach. I caught a corvina after oh, nice. about five or six days of throwing a crocodile. Yeah, I saw that. I said, I, I give that. up, you know. So, I saw that. Yeah. Was, it, was, it, was it Gabriel Ibarra? Yeah, Gabriel Ibarra yeah, and his yeah. wife, lovely wife, Terry. Yeah, he uh, hit me up last night. I saw him on the video and things like that. He's having surgery on Wednesday. Uh, on his knee, yeah. so we send all our very best for a speedy recovery to Gabriel. Well, yeah, he's gonna he's trying to link up with me this week, and he wants to come out there and, and get some of my baits. And, oh, great! And, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna, I'm gonna set him up. So, guys, just be patient with me here. I'm trying to uh, untangle this little mess I have right here. But what I want to tell you about is that, like I said, I fish something really simple uh, when it comes down to bait fishing. Um, I don't use any of uh, I don't use any shrimp flies. I don't use any feathers with lead heads or anything like that yeah um i just feel if you keep it simple you'll just get a better you'll just you'll get bit better better presentation better everything. presentation and so on and so forth. right so this is, this is going to be your little two hook ganyan this there, is right? a two hook ganyan and this is ganyan. just advice for people this that want to catch fish just just fish. Catch fish. Yeah. Right, so, yeah. here we go right here it's a two hook ganyan which i use a three-way swivel again what's good about this is that the fact that a lot of times if you fish a double dropper loop, you're tying a spider hitch. Yeah. And then you're just looping the, uh, the line through the hook. And then when the bait goes down to the bottom with the weights and then you reel it up, it's all twisted and different things like that. Yeah. And it, it just, it can just tangle everything up. Whereas this, the fish do not spin off at all because you have the swivels that are rotating at the same time. Right. And then you just have one single hook, and I advise, don't use easy baiter hooks or anything like that. Use a circle hook, okay? Because a circle hook, you don't have to set the hook. Just let the fish bite the bait and let them set itself. Yes. And then what you do, the reason why you use a circle hook, you leave it down and you let them load up on the second hook. Yes. So you can get two fish at a time. So just it's all about patience. Yeah. You know, you guys can go and set these little things up yourself. Just go like fish by those those three-way swivels and and then just buy your regular barrel swivels and you see this right here this is what you call a breakaway line right here okay this is at the very bottom 
of your setup. Yeah. And it's approximately 12 inches long. You can make it six or whatever. And what you do, you tie your weight to this. Right. So what happens is that you say, for instance, you drop down. I haven't seen nobody tie me a surf fishing yet. Oh, hey, we're doing a podcast right now. That's okay, man. He's, he wants to show us. Come on in. He wants to show us that big old uh, sheep head. Sheep head. Off, oh, you're the one the who beach. caught that? Off off the beach that? I heard about that. Right. Uh, Bosa Chica. So oh, was, nice. there, uh, was that a rocky area? No, we're off the beach. Wow. Yeah, What's your name again? Big Fish, actually. That's right. That's I wanted to come in here and say hello. Big Fish. Big fish. <laughs> Why don't you walk back and say hello? Come, come over here. here. Come on, you can step over, man. He won't bite you. You can take the mask off, man, so you can see yeah. your butt. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to catch COVID. <laughs> say hello to everybody, Big Fish. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen you, man. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm doing good. How's everything? Good. Good. Uh, good. I just thought... They're great. Thank you. That's good. That's yeah. Good. We're going to get back to this podcast. Right, Good to right. see you, man. Likewise, likewise, all right. Man. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let me just run you through the whole setup. So you have your swivel right here, which ties to your main line on your rod. Okay. Then you come here, you have your three-way swivel in which you have your hook. Yep. All right. So it's so approximately from your three-way swivel to your barrel swivel is going to be approximately 18 inches. Okay. And then your leader is going to be approximately 12 inches. Okay. And then you're going to have another approximately 24 inches right here between your three-way swivel and your other three-way swivel because what you want to do you don't want to keep your hooks close to each other you want to you want them to be in different columns of the water uh -huh. because the fish are swinging around and you don't want them to be all bunched up right you see what i'm saying and they should never be able to come up when you tie them up i'm going to show you to where they could touch i'm going to show you real quick one second, guys. <laughs> that freaking sheep's head in the surf. That's pretty wild. Huh? I'm telling you, that's crazy. I never yeah, heard of it. Big fish. Okay, guys. In the car right there. These don't oh, really? Touch. Bring it in here. Huh? Bring it in. I want to see it. He's going to bring the sheep's yeah, head in. He caught in the surf. So these hooks are together, but they don't touch. This is There's a loose line. So you don't ever want to be to where when they're apart that they can swing up and touch each other. Do, you want to have another you know, 12 to 16 inch leader between you know, your another swivel you. to the very bottom of your barrel swivel and then you attach your weight you. and then what happens is that if your weight gets stuck on the bottom as it far as you're losing away. your whole rig you only use lose your uh, your breakaway uh, weight and that's perfect it. that's why you have breakaways this is how I set my stuff up perfect so that's just a simple tackle tip that each and everybody you guys should think about and, and should use yeah for sure that's okay. a great one man once again, here we have here, three swivel, and you have your quick clips right here. And just stagger them just a little bit. So you don't want, you don't, you can have them together, but I like to stagger them a little bit and so they can just move back and forth and stay separate from each other. And what's good about it, they dive. They go, literally go up and down and dive. I mean, it's, it's pretty sick. It's pretty, it's like, you, you know you're gonna get bit. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so that's it on the tackle tip right there. That's perfect. Yeah. Let's take a look at you. Do you mind some breaking no, no, news no, in your podcast? No, no, no. You know what? Come on. Pop over back here. here and oh, on a surf. That's you a didn't nice. catch that in a surf. Yeah. I know you did. Man. Right Are there. you kidding? So what were you using for bait? Picked up the small bait. Nice. That big fish yeah. right here. It's, what the hell did you think yeah. you had? Don't uh, go anywhere. I actually Hold that right up to the game. Come on. Was a god first. Oh, don't get that deep stuff on me, man. Yeah, that's why we're like, I yeah. need to That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I had to bleed them and all that stuff. Dude, thank Good you. Good job, man. Thank that's, you. That, that's thank you. Hey, if you're around later, I'll, I'll talk to you on camera a little bit. That's a heck of a catch. Where he caught it at? You know, out in the man, sand? Man, you, we catch that sand neck or sand of our we'd be like stoked. Right. You that's a beautiful saying? fish. And he didn't have to take a boat ride. <laughs> I love <laughs> that know? guy. All right. Anything else? Uh, you have another tackle tip for us? Oh, uh, no, that's pretty much it on my tackle tips right there. That's perfect. Um, oh, you know what? I, I do want to give you a tackle tip. Okay? Yeah. Right, Depending you. on how deep you're fishing. Okay, because a lot of times you go fish shallow. And when I mean shallow to me is really 100 feet, 150 feet. But uh, a lot of people think that's deep, but 150 feet is, deep, is, is not deep to me. But anything 150 feet or less, depending on the current, I like to fish two ounce weight. I mean, two ounce baits. Yeah. And I'll fish two of them at a time. And let me tell you, they work well. I'm gonna show you just a couple of two ounce baits right here that I have. And 
Once again, you fish these with this the way they swivel. And you don't have to have the leader as long for these because they're smaller. So you can just stay between 18 and 24 on these. Yeah. You know, and once again, they're moving all around also. And then also you have your four ounce. So, you know, you can fish your four ounce along with the two ounce and the three way swivel. Great. I would fish this up to 250 feet easily with a four and a two ounce. So a lot of times what you have to do, you gauge the amount of weight that you're going to use on how deep you are in the current. Right. Uh, if the say for instance, if the current is really, really ripping, you can fish an eight ounce and a six ounce or an eight ounce and a four ounce. Yes. You know, so it all depends. Got you it. Know, so, uh, but what I like to do also, I like to fish one of my bigger baits and then one of my smaller baits because sometimes they're not chewing on that big bait. But you know what? That smaller bait, that six inch bait, that yeah. nine inch bait will get licked. Wow. You know, so I definitely try to mix it up and, 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 and try to provide myself with the best opportunity to catch a fish and based on the size of the bait. You know, so I try to cover all my bases. KJ, it's been remarkable. I love the whole inner city connection. Uh, I like how you took us through the progression of how you became successful in this. But there's one question that remains. And that is, where do we get these things? Well, I'm gonna to talk to the gentleman here at Big Fish and see if he'll like to carry some of these at the store. Yeah. Um, you know, he's right here on the ocean right there. He's in between Orange County and Long Beach. Right on the and corner of PCH yeah, and CLB. Yeah, Perfect exactly. place. They Perfect like place. San Clemente and San Nicholas. So they'll work well out here. And then um, I have to on Tackle. Okay. Uh, Bob over at Save on Tackle has been a big supporter from day one. I've known Bob at Save on Tackle since 1991. Wow. A lot of the guys that used to work there you know, we're still friends today. Excellent. You know, so it's, it's cool over there. Um, I have him at uh, Bird 55. So you can talk to Steve over at Bird 55. Uh, he may need some more stock. Because they've been Steve, like- Steve, behave yourself. Uh, yeah, Steve. Steve who doesn't like to answer the phone, but send him a text, you know. I, yeah, Steve, that's me talking about uh -oh. you. Steve, <laughs> Steve, you're in trouble. Steve and I go way back to Bird 55 days, okay? <laughs> He's still there. He's still there. And then um, over there at uh, Best Tackle in Hawthorne, you have Sky, they have them there. They have a good selection. You get them there. Uh, they have them down in Redondo Beach Sport Fishing on the uh, boardwalk right there. Okay. Where, where you catch the boats, uh, Redondo Special. And Basin the three, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, then they have them over at Islands Tackle, you know, so you can go over there and see them there. They got them there. Uh, when you go up north, you can go to Ventura Sport Fishing. They have them there. I have to go restock. Tucker McComb! They, 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 they sold out. And then, oh, guys, Copes. Copes have them. For you guys in the Central Valley, along the coast up there. Uh, I've been there. Seth. That is a remarkable tackle. Yeah, that's a good, that's probably wow. one of the best, not the best tackle stores in the Central yeah, Valley. Yeah, in back in Bakersfield, right? In Bakersfield. Yeah, yeah, I walked in there and I said, oh yeah. my God, you yeah. guys are loaded with inventory. Yeah, yeah they're loaded with inventory. They're up, they're open early in the morning because, you know, they got a good fishery in the lakes and the streams and the aqueducts. So yeah. they get those live shads and all that. So they're opened up very early and they got a wide range of tackles. Yep. And they actually carry my stuff off. Let me see who else. There's a lot of people who want to carry them, but you know, I'm a one man show. I have to make all of this stuff myself, so it's kind of hard to supply. I and, can relate to know, the one man show. The one pretty man much show, exactly. Brutal, right? You still have all your hair, though, don't you? Uh, no, no. It's, oh, it's, well, it's, that's it's, good. It, it's that Propecia. And it's that Propecia. <laughs> I just gave up. And that Minoxidil, you know. What I'm <laughs> I, I have an ugly head to get bald, so you know. Anyway, I still got to try to catch a girlfriend, so you know I got to still keep all my hair as much as possible. But um, that's where you can get them at now. I know there's quite a few stores that are very much interested um, down in San Diego. Um, actually, H and M Landing wants me to bring them down. Very cool. Here, and, and that'll be the first store that I have them. Um, and uh, and I'm I'm gonna get them out there. I'm starting to focus a little bit more on, on my baits, and then I'll have a line of the smaller baits now, uh, the three eighths, the uh, five eighths one ounce and a one and a half ounce and i use a lot of those one and a half one and one and a half ounces now so i got the colors that i made for you know the bluefin tuna for the yellowtail and stuff like that right these colors right here those right are good for that. the yellows and, yeah good for uh -huh. the yellows good for the bluefin tuna and this is a glow in the dark right here you know for the white sea bass and they have the eyes on them and stuff like that too so i have these and i have the you know the red crab color there. So you got great variety. Yeah, I have a great variety and I came up with my, my smaller four inch one. And I know these are going to kill the bay bass and I, I'm not even worried about that because I've already caught them. So I'm just trying to expand my line, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of freshwater fishermen too. So I need to be able to supply them and get a year round sales. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so absolutely. So that's what's going on. So yeah, that's what's happening. KJ, you're the man. I appreciate you, sir. Mag. Mag 12, 12. Swim baits. When seven inches aren't enough.
<laughs> Perfect. Pleasure having you on, Same my friend. Man, man. All, right. All right. We'll see you Thank soon. You. you got it. Take care.